The radio operator who sent those dots and those dashes and that fateful message was Corporal Irving Strobing. Now, miraculously, he survived the battle and many years as a Japanese prisoner of war. Very fortunately, he's with us now, and he is to tell us exclusively what happened after that last dot and that last dash were transmitted from Corregidor. Mr. Strobing, tell us exactly what did happen. Well, Mr. Knight, the transmission was terminated when I was told that a Japanese tank was approaching the mouth of the tunnel. I thought it would be better for me to get further back in. We remained in the tunnel until the Japanese entered and took charge. We were then lined up in Malenta Tunnel itself and in a kneeling position were tapped on the shoulder by a Japanese officer using a saber and thus formally became prisoners of the emperor. You mean even under such circumstances they went to that degree of protocol? It was unexpected, but it did happen. Now, did you ever realize, Mr. Strobing, that your radio message from Corregidor was broadcast all across the country? No, Mr. Knight, uh, I really didn't. I knew that certain portions of it had definitely been received, but had no idea of just what dissemination was being made. What were the conditions, and how did you manage to survive such an ordeal? Well, Mr. Knight, the... The term of imprisonment lasted 1,216 days. The first portion being spent in the Philippines in a camp at Cabana Tawan until November of 1942 when I was removed to Japan itself. A 27-day voyage in the bottom hold of a Japanese freighter. Upon our arrival in Japan on the 27th of November in 42, I was put to work on a construction project, excavating by hand what was to be a dry dock and later pouring the concrete. After about a year and a half, I was transferred to another camp where we made little rocks out of big ones and also stoked the furnaces in a Japanese steel mill, and that lasted until September 5th, 1945, when we were liberated and returned to the United States. Mr. Strobing, if I remember correctly, while you were still on Corregidor, you tried very hard to get a message through to your mother. Tell us about that, will you? Well, the final transmission from Corregidor was a message to my mother and the other members of my family. It was received in Honolulu and relayed to Washington, and the Army was good enough to have a colonel deliver it at home. Mr. Strobing, you're a very lucky man, and we're ever so grateful to you for being with us today. <laughs>